Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And we want to say happy birthday to Rinda Sundari today. Everybody can shower your blessings upon her so that she can be super happy on her birthday today and give us lots of blessings in return. Hare Krishna. Thus, to derive the full benefit of the chanting of the Mahamantra, we first take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, learn the Panchatattva Mahamantra, and then chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. That will be very effective. And in the next verse, text five, Panchatattva ikavastu nahi kichu bedha, rasa asvadite tabu vividha vibedha. Spiritually, there are no differences between these five tattvas, for in the transcendental platform, everything is absolute. Yet there are also varieties in the spiritual, wor spiritual world. And in order to taste these spiritual varieties, one should distinguish between them. Purport. In his Anubhashya commentary, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur describes the Panchatattva as follows. The supreme energetic, the personality of Godhead, manifesting in order to enjoy five kinds of pastimes, appears as the members of the Panchatattva. Actually, there's no difference between them because they are situated on the absolute platform but they manifest different spiritual varieties as a challenge to the impersonalist to taste different kinds of spiritual humors, rasas. In the Vedas, it is said, Parasya Shaktir Vividhaiva Shriyate. The varieties of energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are differently known. From this statement of the Vedas, one can understand that there are eternal varieties of humors or tastes in the spiritual world. Sri Guranga, Sri Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Sri Gadadhar, and Sri Vastakura are all on the same platform. But in spiritually distinguishing between them, one should understand that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the form of a devotee. Nityananda Prabhu appears in the form of a devotee's spiritual master. Advaita Prabhu is the form of a bhakta, devotee incarnation. Gadadhar Prabhu is the energy of a bhakta. And Srivas Thakur is a pure devotee. Thus, there are spiritual distinctions between them. And this is very interesting here where Gadadhar Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu is the energy of a bhakta. And what does that mean, energy of a bhakta? So Srimati Radharani is the fountainhead of all energies. Krishna, he is avatari. He is the source of all incarnations. Srimati Radharani is the source of all energies, right? Actually, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur points this out that there's only one energy. It's Rupa Shakti, Srimati Radharani, and then come all the different varieties of energies. And in chapter four of the Adi Lila, it stated there that Srimati Radharani is actually the love of the devotees towards Krishna. Okay, so we understand that from Srila Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, when one actually attains the platform of loving Krishna, Right, the platform of bhava, which is a very high stage. Right, first there's sadhana bhakti, then there's bhava bhakti, and then there's prema bhakti. When one gets to the stage of bhava bhakti, state of vishuddha sattva, visheshatma, one's being, visheshatma, becomes imbued with vishuddha sattva, which is the Haladini Shakti, which is Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency, as stated here. 
and samvet shakti, the knowledge potency of the Lord, they actually enter into the heart of the living entity. And then visheshatma, they actually, they become imbued with this bhava. So, Shimati Radharani or Gadadhar Prabhu, Prabhu is the energy of a bhakta. And we'll go to verse 17. Gadadhar Pandadadi Prabhu Shakti Avatara Antaranga Bhaktakari. Ganana Yanhara. The devotees headed by Gadadhar Pandit are to be considered incarnations of the internal potency of the Lord. They are confidential devotees engaged in the service of the Lord. Purport. In connection with verses 16 and 17, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur explains in his Anubhashya. There are specific symptoms by which the internal devotees and the unalloyed or pure devotees are to be known. All unalloyed devotees are shakti tattvas or potencies of the Lord. Some of them are situated in conjugal love and others in filial affection, fraternity and servitude. Certainly all of them are devotees, but by making a comparative study, it is found that the devotees or potencies who are engaged in conjugal love are better situated than the others. Thus, devotees who are in a relationship with the Supreme Personality of Guided in conjugal love are considered to be the most confidential devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Those who, are engage, those who engage in the service of Lord Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Advaita Prabhu generally have relationships of parental love, fraternity, servitude, and neutrality. When such devotees develop great attachment for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they, do become, they too become situated within the intimate circle of devotees in conjugal love. This gradual development of devotional service is described by Sri Narottam Das Thakur as follows. Gauranga Balite Habe Pulaka Sharira Hari Hari Balite Nayane Babe Nira. When will there be eruptions on my body as soon as I chant the name of Lord Chaitanya? And when will there be incessant torrents of tears as soon as I chant the holy names Hare Krishna? When will Lord Nityananda be merciful toward me and free me from all desires for material enjoyment? When will my mind be completely freed from all contamination of desires for material pleasure? Only at that time will it be possible for me to understand Vrindavan. Only if I become attached to the instructions given by the six Goswamis, headed by Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami, will it be possible for me to understand the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna. By attachment, to the devotional service of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one immediately comes to the ecstatic position. When he develops his love for Nityananda Prabhu, he is freed from all attachment to the material world. And at that time, he becomes eligible to understand the Lord's pastimes in Vrindavan. In that condition, when one develops his love for the six Goswamis, he can understand the conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. These are the different stages of a pure devotee's promotion to conjugal love in the service of Radha and Krishna in an intimate relationship with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in the next verse, 18 through 19, the internal devotees or potencies are all eternal associates in the pastimes of the Lord. Only with them does the Lord advent to propound the Sankirtan movement. Only with them does the Lord taste the mellow of conjugal love. And only with them does he distribute this love of God to people in general. Purport. Distinguishing between pure devotees 
and internal or confidential devotees, Sri Rupa Goswami in his book Upadesha Mrita traces the following gradual process of development. Out of many thousands of karmis, one is better when he, when he is situated in perfect Vedic knowledge. Out of so many such learned scholars and philosophers, one who is actually liberated from material bondage is better. And out of many such persons who are actually liberated, one who is a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is considered to be the best. Among the many such transcendental lovers of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the gopis are the best, and among the gopis, Srimati Radhika is the best. Srimati Radhika is very dear to Lord Krishna, and similarly, her pawns, namely Shamakund and Radhakund, are also very dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur comments in his Anubhashya that among the five tattvas, two are energies. Shakti Tattva. And the three others are energetic Shakti Man Tattva. So Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita are the Shakti Man Tattva, Vishnu Tattva. They're the energetic. And Gadadhar Pandit, representing Shakti Tattva, Shivas Thakur, who's representing the Jiva Tattva living entities, they're known as the energies. Unalloyed and internal devotees are both engaged in the favorable culture of Krishna consciousness untinged by a philosophical speculation or fruit of activities. They are all understood to be pure devotees and those among them who simply engage in conjugal love are called Madhurya Bhaktas or internal devotees. The loving services and parental love, fraternity, and servitude are included in conjugal love of God. In conclusion, therefore, every confidential devotee is the pure devotee of the Lord. So this is giving us a very clear understanding of the ontological position of Shigadadar Pandit and the Panchatattva in general. That achintya beta beta tattva, this inconceivable oneness and difference, the pancha tattva, as stated in the beginning of these verses that we read, are spiritually non different. They're one, but yet there's different moods and taste to be relished, and so there is a difference. <laughs> So this simultaneous oneness and difference, which is inconceivable to us, and how Gadadhar Pandit is rep representing all Shakti, as we stated before, Radharani is the fountainhead of all energies. And just to finish this uh, section of Adi Lila, so we'll go to a little bit more pastimes is that beautiful verse, the characteristics of Krishna are understood to be a storehouse of transcendental love. Although that storehouse of love certainly came with Krishna when he was present, it was sealed. But when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came with his associates of the Panchatattva, they broke the seal and plundered the storehouse to taste transcendental love of Krishna. The more they tasted it, the more their thirst for it grew. So we'll now go to the pastime of Gadadhar Pandit. And we're going to be reading from Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. We've heard this pastime in our Srimad Bhagavatam classes, but it's also Nice to read it and get all of the juicy details. So this is from Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, um, the Madhya Kanda, Chapter 7. And this is actually entitled, The Meeting of Gadadhar and Pundarik. And... 
So Rindavan Das Thakur starts off saying, Ebe Suna Sri Vidya Nidhira Agamana Pundarika Nama Shri Krishna Priyatama. Now hear the description of Sri Vidya Nidhi's arrival. His name was Pundarik, and he was very dear to Lord Krishna. In order to glorify the eastern tract of land known as Chetagram, the Supreme Lord induced him to appear there. Although the Lord personally appeared in Navajweep, he sighed deeply because of not seeing Vidya Nidhi there. One day after dancing, Gororoi, Lord Chaitanya, sat down and cried loudly as he exclaimed, Oh, my father, Pundarik. Oh, Pundarik, my father, oh, friend, when will I see you, my dear father? So, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, as stated by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, here it is. Uh, uh, Gadadhar Pandit, Shimati Radharani in Raj Lila, and so Pundarik Vidyanidhi and Krishna Lila is known as Rishabhanu Maharaj, the father of Shimati Radharani. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's also crying for his father because, as we know, from the beginning Mangala Charna of Sri Chaitanya Charyatamita, Radha Krishna Purnaya Vrikritir Haladini Shaktir Asmat Ekatmana Apibuvi Puddadeham Beta Gatoto that. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combination of Radha and Krishna. Actually, Radha and Krishna are one. Yet they eternally separated themselves, Deha Bedham Gatoto, into two personalities to experience the topmost Pranaya Vrikritir Haladi Nishakti Rasmad. And uh, again, they've come together, Sri Chaitanya. Uh, Chaitanyakyam Prakritam Aduna Tadvayam Chaikyam Aptam. They've again come together as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of Srimati Radharani is crying out for his father. Pundarik Vidyanidhi was such a dear associate of Lord Chaitanya. Gauravai manifested many such devotees in this world. The devotees could not at all understand why the Lord cried while calling this name. They said that Pundarik refers to Krishna, but on hearing the name Vidya Nidhi, they began to consider. They understood that he must be a dear devotee of the Lord. When the Lord regained his external consciousness, they all inquired from him. Oh Lord, for which devotee do you cry? Please tell us the truth. Let us have the good fortune of knowing him. Please tell us where he was born and what are his activities. The Lord replied, You are all indeed fortunate, for you have developed a desire to hear about him. All his characteristics are most wonderful. Simply by hearing his name, the entire world becomes purified. His external appearance is just like a materialist. No one can recognize him as a Vaishnava. He took birth in Chattagram and is a greatly learned Brahmin. He is expert in following his religious duties and is honored by all. He constantly floats in the ocean of devotional service to Krishna. His body is decorated with the symptoms of ecstatic love, like tears shivering and hair standing on end. He does not take bath in the Ganges. For he fears touching her waters with his feet. He takes darshan of the Ganges only at night. Many people disrespect the Ganges by rinsing their mouths, brushing their teeth, and washing their hair in her waters. And seeing these activities, he feels pain at heart. For this reason, he goes to see the Ganga at night. Now hear another of his wonderful characteristics. He drinks the water of the Ganges before worshiping the Lord. Then he worships the Lord and executes his other regular duties. 
In this way, he teaches religious principles to all learned scholars. He lives in Chetagram, yet he also has a house here. He will come soon, then you will all see him. On seeing him, none of you will immediately recognize him. Rather, you will simply consider him a materialist. I cannot have peace of mind without seeing him. Therefore, all of you attract him to come here. After speaking in this way, the Lord became overwhelmed and began to cry and call out, O oh, Pundarik, O oh, Father. The Lord cried loudly. Only he knows the glories of his devotees. Or Chaitanya alone knows the glories of his devotees. Only one whom he favors may also know them. In this way, the Lord attracted Pundarik, who thus decided to visit Navadweep. He came with many servants, Brahmins, disciples, devotees, and paraphernalia. He came and secretly resided in Navajweep, where everyone saw him as a gross materialist. None of the Vaishnavas knew him except Mukunda, who immediately recognized him. The learned Dr. Sri Mukunda knew him, for they were both born in Chetagram. The Lord was unlimitedly happy to know about the arrival of Vidyanidhi, but the Lord did not disclose this fact to any of the Vaishnavas. Pundarik appeared to be just like a materialist. Only Mukunda and Vasudev Dat knew the glories of his ecstatic love. Gadadhar Pandit was very dear to Mukunda. He was a constant companion of Mukunda. So Gudadhar Pandit was born in Navadweep, and he's the son of Madhava Mishra. And from birth, he was uh, quite pure as a brahmachari, and he was quite close with Mukunda. Whatever news Mukunda heard, he would tell to Gudadhar. One day he said, today a wonderful Vaishnav has arrived. Oh, good Adhar Pandit, listen carefully. Would you like to see a Vaishnav? Today I will show you a wonderful Vaishnav so that you may think of me as your servant. On hearing this, Gadadhar became very pleased. They immediately departed while chanting the name of Krishna. Vidya Nidhi Mahashai was sitting in his house when Gadadhar Pandit arrived before him. Gadadhar Pandit offered obeisances to Pundarik, who in turn offered him a seat. Vidyanidhi asked Mukunda, what is his name and where does he live? I can see that his body is effulgent due to his devotion to Vishnu. His appearance and nature are both enchanting. Mukunda said, his name is Sri Gadadhar. He is fortunate because since his childhood, he has been detached from the family life. He is known as the son of Madhava Mishra. All the Vaishnavas have great affection for him. He is constantly engaged in devotional service and always associates with devotees. And hearing your name, he came to see you. Vidyanidhi was greatly satisfied to hear this and began to speak to him with great respect. The way Pundarik Mahashai sat there, it appeared as if he were a prince. He sat on an opulent reddish couch decorated with brass armrests. There were three opulent canopies above his head. Next to him, there was an opulent bed covered with fine silk cloth and having pillows on all sides. There were five or seven big and small water pots. There was an opulent brass container filled with already prepared pond. Two opulent spittoons were on his two sides. He smiled as he chewed pond and looked at looked at his lips. Two persons constantly fanned him with opulent fans made from peacock feathers. His forehead was decorated with sandalwood paste tea lock and dots of sandalwood paste and vermilion. What can I say about the wonderful style of his hair, which was anointed with fragrant amalaki oil? By the influence of devotional service, his body appeared like that of Cupid. Anyone who did not know him would certainly consider him a prince. In front was a wonderful palad palanquin equipped with all accessories. By his paraphernalia, he appeared to be a materialist. On seeing his materialistic form, 
some doubt arose in the heart of Sri Gadadhar. Gadadhar Mahashai had been renounced from the time of his birth, so he developed some doubts about Vidyanidhi. He is a great Vaishnav? His appearance with his opulent foodstuffs, opulent dress, and opulent hairstyle is completely like that of a materialist. Gadadhar had good faith in him after hearing about him, but now that he saw him, that faith was lost. Understanding the heart of Gadadhar, Sri Makunda happily began to reveal Vidyanidhi's glories. By the mercy of Krishna, nothing is unseen or unknown to Gadadhar, for Krishna is the Lord of Maya. Then Makunda, who sweetly sings the glories of Krishna, began to recite some verses glorifying devotional service. The witch Putana mercilessly kills children. She tried to kill the Lord with poison, yet the Lord awarded her the position of mother. How can a foolish person not worship such a merciful Lord? He quoted, Aho bakiyam stanakalakutam jingang sayapayadapyasadvi Alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who granted the position of mother to a she-demon, Putana, although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast? Putana was always hankering for the blood of human children, and with that desire she came to kill Krishna, but because she offered her breast to the Lord, she attained the greatest achievement. As soon as Vidyanidhi heard this description of devotional service, he began to weep. The unprecedented flow of tears from his eyes appeared like an incarnation of Ganga Devi. All the symptoms of ecstatic love, like tears, shivering, perspiration, losing consciousness, hair standing on end and loud shouting simultaneously manifest in his body. He roared loudly while exclaiming, go on reciting, go on reciting. He could not remain steady and fell to the ground. He broke all the surrounding paraphernalia by kicking, by the kicking of his feet. Nothing was spared. What happened to the opulent bond container and the nice the prepared pot? What happened to the water pots that were used to drink water? Where did the bed fall by the kick of his feet, out of ecstatic love, he tore apart his opulent cloth with his two hands. What happened to his opulent hairstyle as he rolled on the ground and cried profusely, O oh Krishna, O oh my Lord, O oh Krishna, O oh my life and soul, you have made my heart hard like wood or stone. He lamented and cried loudly, in your present incarnation, I have been deceived. He fell to the ground and rolled about so forcefully that everyone thought, have his bones been broken to pieces? He shivered so vigorously out of ecstatic love that even 10 men could not hold him still. Clothes, bedding, water pots, bowls, and all other paraphernalia were smashed by the kicking of his feet. There was not a single item spared. All of his servants then pacified him and protected what was left. After revealing his ecstatic love for some time in this way, he remained lying there unconscious due to ecstasy. There was no symptom of life in his entire body as Vidyanidhi merged in the ocean of bliss. And just see how much ecstasy is there in that verse about Putana. And it wasn't some esoteric verse from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. But it's the beautiful verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, about Putana and how merciful Krishna is. And then even in his ecstasy, he's lamenting in terms of how his heart became hard like stone. After seeing this, Gadadhar was struck with wonder and became somewhat worried. I have disregarded such a great personality. At what us inauspicious time did I come to see him? Gadadhar Pandit embraced Mukunda with great satisfaction and bathed him in tears of love. 
O Mukunda, you have acted as my real friend, for you have shown me the great devotee Vidya Nidhi Bhattacharya. Is there another Vaishnav like him in the three worlds? In fact, the three worlds become purified by seeing his devotional service. I was able to avoid a great danger because you were with me. And seeing his materialistic appearance, I considered him a materialistic Vaishnav. You understood my mind and revealed the devotional mood of Pundarik. I've committed an offense, so please have him bestow mercy on me so that my offense is nullified. All the devotees who are on the path of devotional service must have a spiritual master. So far, I do not have a guru. My desire is to take mantra initiation from him. If I become his disciple, then he will forgive all the offenses that I've committed by disregarding him. After contemplating in this way, Gadadhar expressed to Mukunda's desire to take diksha initiation. Hearing his proposal, Mukunda was, very, was greatly satisfied. He glorified that proposal by saying, very good, very good. After six hours, the most grave Vidyanidhi regained his external consciousness and sat down peacefully. Gadadhar Pandit's unlimited tears made his entire body wet. Seeing this, Vidyanidhi Mahasaya was most pleased. He embraced Gadadhar and held him to his chest. As Gadadhar stood there in awe and reverence, Mukunda revealed Gadadhar's mind. So <laughs> Mukunda is... Uh, Quoting verses from Srimad Bhagavatam about Putana revealing the heart of Pundarik Vidyanidhi. And then he also reveals Gadadhar's mind. So he revealed Gadadhar's mind. Doubts arose in his mind when he saw your behavior and opulence. In order to atone for his offense, he has now decided to take initiation from you. He's a renounced devotee Vishnu. And since his childhood, he has shown the experience of a mature person. Moreover, he is a qualified son in the family of Madhava Mishra. He has been a constant companion of the Lord since his childhood. Therefore, Pundarik and Gadadhar make the perfect guru and disciple. Please select an auspicious day to initiate him in the mantra of your worshipable Lord. When hearing this, Pundarik Vidyanidhi smiled and said, I've obtained a precious jewel by the arrangement of providence. I will certainly initiate him. There's no doubt about it. By the good fortune accumulated in many births, one attains such a disciple. The most auspicious moment will be found on the Dwadasi of the next waxing moon. Your desire will be fulfilled on this day. Hearing this, Gadadhar happily offered him obeisances. Taking leave of Mukunda on that day, Gadadhar went to see Lord Garanga. Lord Vishvambar was unlimitedly pleased to hear of the arrival of Vidyanidhi. So, very beautiful pastime that's very instructive on seeing a Vaishnav externally and thinking that they are materialistic and how Gadadhar Pandit. He then took initiation to nullify <laughs> his defense. And Gadadhar Pandit, having been born and raised in Navajweep, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he takes sannyas, he travels to Jagannath Puri. So Gadadhar Pandit also goes to Jagannath Puri. And there's a beautiful pastime where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, attempts to go to Vrindavan. As we know, he does not make it. He goes to Kanai Natashala, and then we'll go later on. But there's a point where he tries to go, attempts to go to Vrindavan. And Gadadhar Pandit he wanted to go with the Lord. But Gadadhar Pandit, he was residing at a place called Gopinath. And so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's stayed in Jagannath Puri for some time. He wants to go to Vrindavan. 
He had previously traveled to South India. And so he's getting ready to leave. And there's devotees that are surrounding Lord Chaitanya. And when Gadadhar Pandit started to go with the Lord, he was forbidden to come and was asked not to give up the vow of Kshetra Sanyas. Srila Prabhupada explains, when one takes Kshetra Sanyas, he leaves his household life and goes to a place of pilgrimage devoted to Lord Vishnu. Such places include Purushottam, Jagannath Puri, Navadweep Dam, and Mathura Dam. The Kshetra Sanyasi lives in these places alone or with his family. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur considers Kshetra Sanyas to be the preferable Vanaprast situation in this age of Kali. So for Vanaprastas, those who've gone through householder life, um, you don't have to necessarily take sannyas, but you can reside at a holy place like New Ashram and engage in devotional service to the deities. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya lived in this way, and he has been called the Kshetra Sannyasi, that is the Sannyasi living in Chaganath Puri. So, Banditakahe Yahan Tumi Se Nilachala Kshetra Sannyas Mara Yoka Rasatala. When he was requested to return to Jagannath Puri, Gadadhar Pandit told the Lord, wherever you are staying is Jagannath Puri. Let my so-called Kshetra Sanyas go to hell. Now this is from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 16. So Gadadhar Pandit, he's taken Kshetra Sanyas and Jagannath Puri, serving Gopinath. But now he's like, let that go to hell. I'm going to go with you. Wherever you go is Jagannath Puri. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Gadadhar Pandit to remain at Jagannath Puri and engage in Gopinath service, Gadadhar Pandit replied, one renders service to Gopinath a million times simply by seeing your lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, if you abandon his service, it will be my fault. It is better that you remain here and render service. That will be my satisfaction. The pundit replied, do not worry. All the faults will be on my head. I shall not accompany you, but shall go alone. I shall go to see Sachimata, but I shall not go for your sake. I shall be responsible for the abandoning of my vow and service to Gopinath. Thus Gadadhar Pandit Goswami traveled alone, but when they all arrived at Kattak, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called him and he went into the Lord's company. No one can understand the loving intimacy between Gadadhar Pandit and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gadadhar Pandit gave up his vow in service to Gopinath, just as one gives up a piece of straw. Gadadhar Pandit's behavior was very pleasing to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord took his hand and spoke to him, displaying the anger of love. You have abandoned Gopinath's service and broken your vow to live in Puri. All that is now complete because you've come so far. You're wanting to go with me is simply a desire for sense gratification. In this way, you are breaking two religious principles. Because of this, I'm very unhappy. If you want my happiness, please return to Nilajala. You will simply condemn me if you say any more about this matter. Saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got into a boat and Gadadhar, Gadadhar Pandit immediately fell down unconscious. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered Sarvabhama Bhattacharya to take Gadadhar Pandit with him. The Bhattacharya told Gadadhar Pandit, get up. Such are the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You should know that Lord Krishna himself violated his own promise just to keep the promise of Grandfather Bhijma. Similarly, tolerating separation from you, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has protected your vow with great endeavor. In this way, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya revived Gadadhar Pandit. Then both of them, very much grief-stricken, returned to Jagannath Puri Nilajala. All the devotees would abandon all kinds of duties for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sake, yet the Lord did not like the devotees giving up their promised duties. 
All these are the misgivings of loving affairs. Whoever listens to these incidents gets the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet very soon. And then later on in this chapter, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returns to Jagannath Puri and he met with all the devotees and he talks about how different devotees all met with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gadadhar Pandit also came and met the Lord. Then before all the devotees, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to speak as follows. It was my decision to go to Vrindavan through Bengal in order to see my mother in the river Ganges. Thus I went to Bengal, but thousands of devotees began to follow me. Many hundreds of thousands of people came to see me out of curiosity. And due, due to such a large crowd, I could not travel very, very freely on the road. With great difficulty, I went to the town of Ramakeli, where I met two brothers named Rupa and Sanatan. And then Sanatan Goswami told him not to go to Vrindavan with such a uh, that is not appropriate for one to be followed by a crowd of thousands when going to Vrindavan. Although I heard this, I did not pay it any attention. And in the morning, I went to the place named Kanai Natashala. And so <coughs> Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said that uh, glorified Madhavendra Puri going to Vrindavan alone. And then he said, I left Gadadhar Pandit here, and he became very unhappy. For this reason, I could not go to Vrindavan. <laughs> it's very beautiful that he's saying this. And this is also an interesting point because Pundarik Vidyanidhi, Gadadhar Pandit, so many devotees that are very intimate with Lord Chaitanya, and they're very great personalities in Vrindavan, during their time with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they actually never went to Vrindavan. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying, actually, I couldn't go to Vrindavan because I made Gadadhar Pandit unhappy, telling him about his Kshetra Sanyas. Being encouraged by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's words, Gadadhar Pandit became absorbed in ecstatic love. Immediately clasping the lotus feet of the Lord, he began to speak with great humility. Gadadhar Pandit said, wherever you stay is Vrindavan, as well as the river Yamuna, the river Ganges, and all other places of pilgrimage. Although wherever you stay is Vrindavan, you, can, you will still go to Vrindavan just to instruct people. Otherwise, you will do whatever you think best. Taking this opportunity, Gadadhar Pandit said, just now the four months of the rainy season have begun. You should therefore spend the next four months in Jagannath Puri. After remaining here for four months, you will be free to do as you like. Actually, no one can stop you from going or remaining. Upon hearing the statement, the devotees present at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated that Gadadhar Pandit had properly presented their desire. And staying in Jagannath Puri in Chaitanya Bhagavad, there's a beautiful elaboration on how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. And they would hear the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj, the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj. And when they got to these sections of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say, let's read it again. And they would read it again. And so they would read a hundred times the pastimes of Dhruva, a hundred times the pastimes of Prahlad. And just think about that, that uh, amount of taste, that ruchi, the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's Radha and Krishna, and Gadadhar, who's Srimati Radharani, they weren't skipping to the 10th canto. They were focusing on these beautiful pastimes of liberated persons in earlier sections of Srimad Bhagavatam. They weren't making Srimad Bhagavatam cheap. 
Gadadhar Pandit was crying, hearing these pastimes so much. But later on, in the when Srinivas Acharya goes to take shelter of Gadadhar Pandit and learn Srimad Bhagavatam from him, the Srimad Bhagavatam that Gadadhar Pandit had was ruined because of crying so much hearing these pastimes that Srinivas Acharya had to go and find another Srimad Bhagavatam to bring to Gadadhar Pandit. So very amazing, deep realizations here how uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gadadhar Pandit would relish Srimad Bhagavatam. And I just wanted to end with uh, one final glorification. I mean, not final. We can speak days and days and days on the pastimes and qualities of Gadadhar Pandit through Srila Prabhupada's mercy in writings. But just want to bring out in this morning's reading that in Chaitanya Charitamrita Antia Lila 7, Vallabhabhata or Vallabhacharya, he goes to Jagannath Puri and he tries to show off his intelligence and learning. He becomes very prideful. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very mercifully cuts down his pride as the Lord always wants to keep his devotees very humble and meek. Pride, right, is the, that pratishta is the root of all anartas. So one can actually not have love of God if pride name and fame actually stays in the heart. So Vallabhabhata, he wanted to speak his own commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. And there's one part where he goes to Gadadhar Pandit and just starts uh, reciting it. And Gadadhar Pandit, he knows that this is not pleasing to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so he's praying to Krishna that, please, dear Krishna, protect me in this danger. Lord Chaitanya is in everyone's heart and he will know my mind. I do not fear him, but his associates are extremely critical. So Gadadhar Pandit was very merciful to Vallabhabhata and Vallabhabhata was trying to uh, take kind of advantage of that association. So in the pastime, Vallabhabhata, he receives initiation from Gadadhar Pandit. And Jagadananda Pandit, he has a certain type of <laughs> quarreling behavior with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's stated that Gadadhar Pandit's pure and deep love for Lord Chaitanya was like that of Rukmini Devi, who was always submissive to Krishna. Lord Chaitanya sometimes desired to see his affectionate anger, but because of his knowledge of the Lord's opulences, his anger was never invoked. So Lord Chaitanya sometimes showed his apparent anger, Roshabhas, and that inspired great fear in the heart of Gadadhar. Previously, when Krishna joked with Rukmini, she took his words seriously and fear awoke in her mind. So remember how in the beginning, ontologically, Gadadhar Pandit is Srimati Radharani, who also has the same mood as Jagadananda Pandit, but as Gadadhar Pandit, that mood is very different. He plays a very submissive role. So we mentioned this very uh, amazing, you could say, Siddhanta, that Radha and Krishna, they're both born on Ashtami. Krishna is born on Janma Ashtami, the eighth day, and Shimati Radharani, Radharani, Radhashtami, eighth day. So there's 14 days in uh, the lunar, right, the waxing moon and the waning moon, there's 14 days, and that creates one month. So Krishna, Radha and Krishna, they both appear in the half, so half moon. But as Lord Chaitanya, when they combine together, they appear on the full moon, the Purnima. So those half moons both come together, full moon. In Gadadhar, a pundit appears on the new moon. Right, where the moon is hidden, concealed. So Srimati Radharani appears as Gadadhar Pandit in a very concealed way where knowledge of the Lord's opulences, his anger was never invoked. And so Vallabhabhata receives the 
Kishore Gopal Mantra from Gadadhar Pandit is initiated. And Srup Damodar Goswami, he says to Gadadhar Pandit that Lord Chaitanya neglected you to test you. Right? He, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew about Vallabhabhata and things, and so he wanted to test Gadadhar. Why did you not retaliate by repro reproaching him? Why did you fearfully tolerate his criticism? Gadadhar Pandit said, Lord Chaitanya is independent and the topmost omniscient personality. I cannot talk as if I were his equal. I cannot tolerate, uh, he said, I can tolerate whatever he says. He will be very merciful to me automatically after considering my faults and attributes. He then went and fell crying at the Lord's lotus feet. Lord Chaitanya spoke sweet words, smiling slightly after embracing him. I wanted to agitate you, but you did not become angry. Instead, you tolerated everything and stayed fixed in your simplicity. In this way, you have purchased me. No one can describe the love of Gadadhar Pandit, nor how merciful Lord Chaitanya is to him. Thus, the Lord is called Gadadhar Pranana, the life and soul of Gadadhar, and Gadai Goranga, the Goranga of Gadadhar Pandit. Who can understand Lord Chaitanya's pastimes? They're like the Ganges, for hundreds and thousands of branches flow from even one of them. Gadadhar Pandit is celebrated all over the world for his gentle behavior, brahminical attributes, and steady love for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the Lord purified Vallabhabhata by cleansing him of the mud of false pride by such activities. The Lord also instructed others. So Gadai Goranga, Gadai Goranga. All glories to Sri Gadadhar Pandit and Gadadhar Prananat, the life and soul of Gadadhar, and Vijaya Krishna Prabhu said, just a small contribution for today's recitation, peaceful, renounced, serious, self-composed. Fond of solitude, Gadadhar proved quite a contrast to his bosom friend, Goroi, who is fickle, unsteady, and whimsical. In Ganga Das Pandit's toll, his Sanskrit school, Nimai Pandit regularly teased Gadadhar by challenging him with illogical questions from Mahanidhi Swami, Gaudiya Vaishnav Samadhis in Vrindavan. Gadadhar Pandit, Kichai. Okay, is there any... Anything else anybody would like to say? Any reflections or questions from today's readings? Hare Krishna Prabhu, this is Jeevan Muktadas. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you. I, I um, am wondering why the Panchatattva are referred to as, you know, the Tattva, the truths. Um, yeah, what's the, the, you know, if you could explain why they're given that title. Um, I, well, tattva is actually an interesting word when you break it down in Sanskrit. So tat means that, and tva, it, it actually means truth. So that truth or that which is. Right, tat and tva, that which is. So when we speak about the term tatva, we usually just translate it as truth. Um, so in the material world, everything is relative to the absolute truth, the param tatva. So maya is that which is not. <laughs> so in uh, bringing out why pancha tattva, tattva uh, that is because they are eternally that is. So they're not relative truths like maya, but they're actually tattva truths. So we speak about Krishna tattva, right? the, the truth of Krishna, the radha tattva, rasa tattva, Right, Nam Tattva, the truth of Nama. And um, in certain ways, Tattva can sometimes be known as the uh, like conclusion of a certain thing because it is that is. So um, it's never 
specifically stated like panchatattva, the five truths, you know, why we call them truths, because again, that tattva means that is. So otherwise uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's not really a breakdown of that because it's just a, uh, a way of saying the truth. So the truth of Lord Nityananda, the truth of Gadadhar Pandit, and so the Panchatattva, there are five truths that represent the absolute reality, the five foundational uh, aspects of Krishna uh, through Advaita Prabhu, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, and then the energies and the living entity. So it's actually basically comprising all of existence and all of that is if that's a satisfactory answer to your question yeah thank you thank you guy hey, krishna if there's any other questions or comments it's getting a little late sorry all right. Thank you for your kind attention during the reading today. Please forgive any faults of mine in reading. And Hare Krishna Vanchakalpa, Rubius